here we are on the CEO Focus Business Mastery Podcast, and we're going to be talking about communications today with Ed Finneran, CEO of Atlantic. Welcome, Ed. Thanks, Ron. Thanks for inviting me. Let me see if I can pepper you with uh, some questions here. Uh, One thing I noticed uh, when the coronavirus first hit, uh, I immediately got out with messages to my base of um, not only at NABO, but also my base of business owners at CEO, in CEO Focus. And I said, you got to put the, together a plan. And I gave them an outline of, of a plan to handle uh, this COVID-19 issue. And one thing that just impressed me is how you and your company, you're already on it. You're already, you know, you were already working a communication plan with your people. Mm-hmm. And, you, you know, if, if we look at the hundreds of business owners and, uh, that are involved in NABO, you, you're, Atlantic Online, uh, under your direction, was way out in front in having a written communications plan, starting to meet with your people and, and, and executing that plan. So if you could tell us, let's go back to the very moment when you said, oh my God, this COVID-19, this is a big issue. What what was going through your mind and who did you talk to first in your company and how did it work? So I think that most people in the United States started noticing Corona-19, COVID-19, probably in mid-March or early March of this year. Uh, Atlantic Online senior staff started discussing it in late January. Really? Um, yeah. So we, we saw news reports coming out of China uh, about this. Uh, it, you know, you've seen similar things in the past. This one had a different flair to it, and that's why it perked us up. Um, and we actually put together a pre-pandemic uh, response team uh, in early February, very early February. Um, and we started meeting on a regular basis, probably twice a week um, at that time, uh, developing a written plan in the event this went somewhere. So by the, by the time that um, the third week in February hit, and it looked to be very serious, we knew we had to, to continue this and get it distributed out to staff. Um, so we finalized our plans um, by the end of February. Uh, and distribute it to staff, both in written form, but also um, on uh, telephone calls. So we had conference calls, video calls with staff uh, to go over this, not to scare anybody, because then it was still a little bit early, Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, I needed everybody prepared. We're a critical industry, telecommunications, and we knew that if something like this was actually to occur, the, the uh, amount that our business customers and including government organizations that we support, um, we're gonna be in flux and we had to be in a position to support them. So um, we, we um, besides the written plan, part of the plan was to ensure that all of our staff had adequate technology at home um, to work remotely. Uh, in general, we rotate employees to ensure once a quarter that they can work from home. So staff, once a, once a quarter, will work from home just to make sure. So we were pretty set, but we wanted to make sure that, you know, that all the employees had the equipment. Only one employee needed another computer for home. Uh, so we got that in place quickly. Um, so then, then the, the, the balloon went up, per se, uh, in early February. So we had a final conference call informing staff that they were now, the plan was now in place. And about 80 to 85% of our staff is working at home um, where we have 24 by seven staff at our data centers operating. Uh, and also our fiber field crews have not stopped. In fact, they've been busier than ever during this um, because of all the orders uh, that came in. Um, and, and to speak to that, thank God what the plan was already in place because we had the busiest month in the history of the company in March. The quantity of orders for fiber and telephone service went through the roof. Uh, and because we weren't dealing with how the employees were gonna 
deal with the COVID-19. They already knew what the plan was. They were able to focus on caring for our customers. So it, it really came together well, the entire preparation. Yeah, it, it, it was impressive talking to you at this time when most of the world was going crazy. You know, the, it, you know to, to have something for most people really outside of anything that they would have ever expected in their lifetime yeah. to hit. And to have you all um, and watch your leadership in, in this, in the communication with your staff, uh, was really was really amazing to see. So I, I want to congratulate you for that because it you you by far were well out ahead of the curve. In fact, a lot further ahead than a lot of our government agencies were to handle this. So congratulations on that. Now, let's just talk about how you communicate with your workforce at, at Atlantic Online on a regular basis. So mm -hmm. normal business, you've got, let, let's just say you started getting issues with uh, a number of customer complaints for something, fiber going down, or you know, I'm, I'm, I'm coming up with ideas here, but give me an idea when, when you're dealing with uh, something out of the, the normal and you need to communicate with your people, what are some of the things you do? What are, what are some of the communication tasks you do, did you have set up, but that you would use when when unexpected things happen? Sure. Um, I, I you know I think a good example of that um, is there was a co early in the COVID time period um, there was a COVID known case at one in one of the buildings where one of our data centers is, and so we needed to get together a team together quickly to clear the data center, um, get the word out to employees and to customers. And so we did that completely through Microsoft Teams. Okay. Um, well, I was able to create a quick channel uh, of all the people involved, managers, support staff, and I pressed one button, it dialed all of those people simultaneously. They picked up their phones, they were all on a conference call together. They didn't even know what the conversation was about yet. Wow. Wow. Um, and so once that first call happened, a record happens in Microsoft Teams, and we use that to store files about the incident. We were able to chat back and forth. As tasks were assigned, they reported back in the same channel. Um, so it was extremely efficient, and it was 100% through Microsoft Teams. Uh, so that, that's one of the channels that we use. Um, we also have, if you go to status.atlantech.net, you can see the status of all of our systems. And if you subscribe to the particular service you're in, any affected service that you have as a customer, you will automatically receive notifications if there's anything okay. affecting them. So it's a very clean and fast way to get communications out to customers. Also, when the problems resolve, they'll get all good notice back out through the right. So, um, and then of course there's the trouble ticketing system. If a customer has an issue, um, they report it, they get a trouble ticket number. And if it's, a, if it's a service affecting for multiple customers, let's say there's a fiber cut, those tickets are then grouped into a master ticket. And when the master ticket is resolved or there's updates on it, they go to all the individual tickets that were open as well. So we have many forms of communication to ensure that communication is going on both with internal staff and externally to our customers, all in a, in a proven, repeatable manner that's easy to manage. Yeah, that's, that's, it's really impressive that through the technology that you have, that you can communicate this with so many people so quickly, particularly impressed with using Microsoft Teams. To, and, and when you say that you put together a uh, I would call it a team, but uh, a sub team or something, but you called it something else. What did you call it? Uh, a, a, a response team. Response team. Yeah. So you just taken, you're adding names of all the people that you need to be contacted at a particular period of time, like right now. Yeah. And then have that automatically dial everybody and put them on a conference call. Yes. Really. Yeah. You just, Powerful. it, it's, uh, you know, you just put in each person's name into Teams into a chat, and then you hit call, 
and I dialed all of them. That's, uh, that is unbelievable. Now, let's take this and let's think of it from a culture point of view. Mm -hmm. Your staff's communication up and down the ladder, uh, what kind of things do you do to, to build the camaraderie, to build the culture within Atlantic? Uh, I, just as a little aside, I like you know going into companies and just watching their everyday staff handle themselves whether it's a reception uh, person uh, or just the way people interact, walking down the hallways and so forth. You, you can really tell a lot about culture by just observing. And the times that I've been in your offices, I've uh, been, always been impressed. Everybody says, hi, you know, there, there is a, a, a nice camaraderie. How do, you, how do you do, you know, you've got to be communicating with your people and obviously you do that. But to keep that culture going, what are some of the things that you do? Uh, I, you know, it starts at the top and it starts with me. And I'm very involved with our staff uh, on day-to-day -day issues. Um, I check in with them on a regular basis. Uh, I see how they're doing. I, I'm, during COVID-19 times, I'm calling employees, individual employees at all levels of the company, just to check on them and their families. Um, and I think by, by starting there, you're teaching people that we're all part of one family yeah. and that we care and that everybody in the company cares. Individual managers are doing that as well. Um, they have subgroups, uh, their teams that they meet with on a regular basis and follow up with them. So culture stops at the top. I try to do my part to do that. Um, and, and knowing what is happening with your employees is, is very key. We had a, an employee uh, during COVID-19 times burned himself, very bad burns, second and third degree burns. I immediately got on the phone and called him, checked on him. Um, we sent him food. We, we sent him a lot of things to support him during that time, made sure he had the right doctors in place. And, and he said he was almost in tears just from the response of all the employees at the company on how much we checked on him and cared about him. He said, hey, this is a family. And you know what? In retaining employees, them knowing that they are part of the family is key and we need all of our employees. Mm -hmm. so. yeah, and and, and you, you, you've been able to keep a lot of, a lot of, not all of your key employees and, and many, most people, most business owners, they understand there's high cost and turnover, but they often don't do the right things that they need to do to keep turnover low. And, you know, it, it, it's, it, but it is culture and it comes from the top. You reminded me of a story with uh, Toyota and one of the key executives at Toyota in one of their plants. Uh, he just on his own was walking around the plant and started picking up trash and stuff on the floor. Yeah. He didn't send out a directive. Right. He didn't, you know, go after people and discipline them. He just started picking up. Yeah. And then one day, a couple of people on the floor saw him and they started picking up. And after a period of time, the place was really clean because of his leadership, because of the steps that he made. And, and the, the power of the leader of, of companies, small, big, doesn't make any difference what your size is, but what the things that the leader does to set direction, to set you know, just good common sense ways of dealing with people really, really goes a long way in, in companies. So it's nice to hear your story. Well, thank you. It's true in companies and all types of organizations. It's true in our country. You need leaders who are acting the right way, and then everyone will follow their lead. 